When the Philippines hosted the APEC in 1996, the leaders launched the Manila Action Plan for APEC or MAPA. MAPA specified the first steps of an evolving process towards achieving the Bogor goals of progressive and comprehensive trade and investment liberalization by 2010 for developed countries and by 2020 for developing countries. I shouldn't say countries, economies. Let me correct that. MAPA includes initiatives that address concerns on improving market access, both tariff and non-tariff measures, enhancing market access and services, providing an open investment regime, reducing the cost of business, doing business, building an open and efficient infrastructures, and strengthening economic and technical cooperation. In the recently concluded leaders' meeting in Beijing, the leaders endorsed an extensive array of measures to build on APEC's work on trade and investment liberalization and on facilitation and economic cooperation. The list of issues in this symp symposium reflects the breadth of the interest that we share in the APEC region. It also reminds us of how far APEC has come since the last time the Philippines hosted APEC in 1996. Hence, we are looking forward to hosting the meeting of Ministers Responsible for Trade, MRT, APEC Women in the Economy, and the SME Ministerial Meeting, as well as other equally important sectoral ministerial meetings in the Philippines in 2015. As incoming chair, the Philippines welcomes your cooperation and support to strengthen APEC and to continue to promote it. It is a for, to, to continue to promote it as a forum that provides practical, relevant, and results-oriented initiatives to fulfill our common goals of development, prosperity, and progress. I hope that the discussions in this symposium and informal meeting will provide the appropriate background for the 2015 theme of inclusive growth. While we will continue to look at issues such as EPTAP, the Bali package of the WTO, Doha Round WTO, uh, ITA, environmental goods, for the, for the chairmanship of the Philippines next year, for, in particular for the APEC 2015 MRT and SME Ministerial Meeting, we will put special emphasis on the SME agenda. Why is the SME agenda important? From our perspective, the SME agenda is very critical actually, not only to APEC, but to the forward movement of global trade in general because SMEs are one of the strongest voices now opposing global trade. And that is because they hardly feel the benefits of global trade. Many of the SMEs see the influx of goods and services into their own markets, but find it very cumbersome and difficult to take advantage of the free trade agreements because of the very cumbersome rules and procedures. SMEs actually are two, from my perspective, two different kinds. Actually, there are many kinds, but the two main ones would be the SMEs that are part of global value chains. And this has uh, merited some discussion recently in in many of the trade uh, forums, including ASEAN and APEC. But there is also a more important part. Those are what we refer to in the Philippines as cottage industries. These are the smaller SMEs that may include some micro enterprises. These are the small business people who have uh, one, two, three, four, five person oper type of operations that have, some of them produce very good quality products. They're mainly in food processing. 
They're also in handicrafts. They're also in, to some extent, in furniture. And also in many of the uh, production of smaller items. And these are the ones that we need the most help. For the global value chain SMEs, you would need a different intervention to help them out from the cottage industry SMEs. So I hope that we keep that in mind as we move forward in developing uh, some action plans that we will want to do to help out the SMEs. We welcome the support of economies on initi initiatives that focus on trade facilitation for SMEs. It's really market access that's lacking uh, for the most part. So we'd like to emphasize really the trade facilitation agenda for SMEs. This would involve uh, upgrades in customs and also simplifying the rules of origin administration and establishment of uh, institutional support systems for SMEs. We are counting on all senior officials to make APEC the incubator for active and dynamic SMEs and be enablers in providing SMEs wider access to opportunities for inclusive growth and their integration into the global value chain. In addition, hosting and chairing the 2015 APEC Women and the Economy will be a vital event for the Philippines as we welcome new landmark initiatives from the United States and Japan to further advance the women's economic empowerment agenda. The Philippines encourages all APEC fora to consider incorporating the gender perspective into their working group to foster synergies within and across the APEC region. In sum, I wish all of you a dynamic and enlightening discussion today as a first step towards producing significant results that will ensure the success of APEC 2015. We have set important visions for APEC and the time for action starts now.